Welcome to the greatest actor of 2020. So, um, I was gonna actually do this with Malin because next last week we played a card game, but I had a Mario game I wanted to play, and since that went too long, we decided to move that to this week. I was gonna do my season four DVDs, but I decided to replace it because unfortunately. I wanted to show you this last time, and we didn't get to, and this is really badly. So we'll show them next week. It's called the Mario Board Game, and I I treated it like a Candyland game. Like, if you play Candyland, you know how there's, like, squares, and yeah. But this is not Candyland. I made a Mario game, and before you even look at this, this is not how I used to do my Mario game. Uh, if The kind of Mario game that I play, it's kind of like the Mario Wii. If you played the Mario Wii, like, World 1... There was a video, I YouTube video I tried to make back at our old house, but unfortunately it was copyrighted, so I couldn't play, play Mario. So sorry, guys, if you wanted to watch my Mario playlist. But it, it, it's this thing where you have nine worlds, you know, and you have to... King Bowser steals Princess Peach, and you have to save her on World A, and then you get a bonus world. That goes along with this. Now, the old tutorial of this game is that um, usually... what. This board game is not like other board games. Like, when you play other board games, like Sorry or anything like that, it's one board, right? I treat a paper as one board game. This is one board game, except for this one. This is the bonus board for World 9. But let me explain. Before I explain the game, what I need to do is tell you, the first time I made this game, it wasn't like this. See how all the worlds are made into one board game? I know it's kind of hard and difficult because there's, like, a lot stuff on it but like a long time ago what i used to do is have a whole page filled with world one because like when you think of Candyland, it was like a big board game so think of this as Candyland. world one should take up this whole piece of paper and then i'd grab world two world three world five and world nine should be its own paper and it's not its own paper even though it looks like its own paper on here i'll get to that in a minute but usually every world has its own paper and so when you when you when you play the game that way, the game gets really long. So like for example, if we ever were to play this game on a live stream, the live stream would probably be like four hours. I don't want it to go that long, you know. Or if we just did a regular video on this, it'd be like four hours, and that's not what I wanted to do. So I made a shorter version of it. Uh, and there was a time in my life when I remade the game, and it was the same rules, and it was the same thing, except I made the world shorter, and I put three worlds on each board game. One, two, three, and then I did another paper, four, five, six, and then seven, eight, nine, you know. And then after that, I stopped doing Mario for a while, but then one day, um, not this week, because I've been busy, but last, sometime last week, after making videos, I got a little bored, and I wanted to break from my laptop for a while. So I just drew something. And it wasn't supposed to be a Mario game. But I was just making a random like Candyland thing. And then I was like, ooh, this could be a Mario game. you know? And I got in the habit to turn it into a short version of Mario. And so just like this, you have all eight worlds on here. World 1 is the shortest. That's what I kind of did with all the worlds. Is that before I made, combined it into one big board... You know, when I had it all on separate pieces of paper, sometimes I'd make World 1 the shortest, make World 2 a little bit longer, World 3 long, and World 8 would be the longest. Or sometimes I'd go out of order where maybe World 8 is one of the shortest worlds, and World 5 is the longest, you know, etc. And, as you can see, all the sides, sides right here, these are all the bad guys. This is what happens if you get every single one of these bad guys. Now... Some of the rules that I made in this game, I, I haven't played in a long time, so I forgot what what the rules were, so I changed some of the bad guys, and so we're going to go through each one, but before we do, I combined each world on here. So right here, you have world one, and when you get to this dead end, that's world two, and then world three, and it's that's not world three, that square is from world, like, six. We skip over that. The, this square right here is world three. And then you go into loop-de-loop, -loop, world four, and then world five, world six, wait, world six, right? No, world six, then world seven. Oh, you can't even see this. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Let me start all over. World one. World 2, world loop-de-loop, -loop. it has a loop-de-loop -loop 3, and then this is the only world where you actually have to jump all the way over here for world 4, 
world five, world six, uh, world seven, world eight, and then you get up here in your home. Okay? And then this is world nine, and it goes in a circle. You see, look. It goes in a circle. World nine. So you go down here, you go up here, and around. And then over here is the treasure treasure world, where you try to go and get the treasure. But I changed a lot in this game. The game was used, the game used to be played like this, where instead of, at the end of each world, instead of having a blank spot in between the lines, there would be a portal to the next world. And it wouldn't start right here. It'd probably start right over here, away from the end of world one. And at the end of each world, just like when you play the Mario Wii, you know how when you finish world one, you have an end castle? Like you have a castle where you defeat the, the bad guy, like to finish off world one. Um... And there was a half wake, there was a half castle, but I didn't do half castles on here. At the end of each world, I did put a bad guy at the end where you would finish world one, and then hope without getting caught by a bad guy, defeat him and go to world two. You know, and it used to be drawn like this, where you have squares, right? Just like Candyland, you go up and around and hit his head. Boink. So like this, just say his head's right here where this finger is. See, see my finger. Here's the blocks. You go up and around. Like, I got a six on the dice. You roll the dice and you go six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oop, I got a mushroom. Dang it, I have to start world one all over. Dang it. Or, like, if I got a turtle, go back six. Okay, fine. <clears throat> and then, or let's just say I got six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I hit him once, and then I go back down here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Bonk. One, two, three, four, five. After I hit him three times, just like in Mario Wii, I go to World 2. But just to make this game shorter, I decided not to do that. And on some Mario games, I actually only did that on World 8 with King Bowser, where you just hit, walk, walk around and hit his head. But, yeah. So let's go through this game. So, fine, you have this treasure world. That's what I did. And when I made, when I first made this Mario board game, you had a treasure world. And if you didn't get caught by any of these listed bad guys, if you didn't get caught by any of these listed bad guys, then guess what? Um, you get the treasure, right? If you make it to the end of the world. Now, do you know the can? No, I'll talk about the canyons in just a second. But like, there was I when I first. Not the first time I made this Mario game, but like the third or fourth time I made this Mario game. Because after I make the Mario game, I play it and then I lose the pieces. But like when I make like a third or fourth game of it, I add these two worlds in it. It's called Since I Love Once Upon a Time. Like, do you see these right here? Look, I tried making my own Once Upon a Time posters. This is season one. Wait, no. 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 This is season one. This is season two. So you can see this is season three. This is season four, as the icicles. And this is season five, season six. See how it says "Long Live the Queen" and the lightning slash in the middle. And then you flip it this way, and you have "Once Upon a Time in Wonderland" and "Once Upon a Time Season 7. So, but what I would do is that I would make an apple world. So, like you know, there's nine worlds on Mario Wii, right? Imagine if World 10 was the treasure world. That's what I did. And then for World 11 was a free world. And what a free world is, is that there's no bad guys. Okay? No bad guys. This is just all blank and you just go to the end. You know? So imagine if there was a free world where you did each level on Mario Wii and there was no mushrooms or no bad guys. There was no way to die. You could just pass the level. Wow. Right? And then you have World 12 where it's the apple season. And I took that from Once Upon a Time. Since there's a lot of apples on Once Upon a Time, I decided to make an apple season. Sin season 1 and 2 don't have an apple, so I considered season 1 being a blue apple. And then pr a purple apple for season 2. And then season 3's apple logo is red. Season 4 is, well, it's blue, but snow can also be white. So I put white for season 4. And then season 5 is a black apple. Season 6 is red and black, so that's what I did. And then season 7 is blue and purple. Well, I didn't even do season seven back then because I only did the first six seasons, but you know what I mean. 
And then once upon a time Wonderland, I don't know what color that was, but I was only doing like six apples when I, when I, the last time I made this game, it was before they got renewed for season seven. So I don't know what season seven would actually be if I was still making that game, but it would be a very long game. I was actually going to do this with Malin, but by, by the time I'm making this video, she's not even home. And even if we were going to play this game, we were going to play this one. Because when me and Malin played this game, it only took us like an hour to play it. Which is great, because if we were making a YouTube video on this, it's only an hour. Now, if we were playing the original Mario game that I w made like a long time ago, it would have took like four hours. So I'm glad we're not doing that. But you get the whole thing. So all the Mario worlds, etc. Yeah. Um, each world had like at least 30 squares on it. So you had to at least roll a 30 to finish the world. Unless you got a canyon or something like that. But like... You know, like those cans on the Wii that take you to, like, World 5. Yeah, I, I do I do those in my game, too. But anyway. um, Then you have, like, World 2, which is, like, 70 squares. And then World 3, which is, like, 80. And then it would always go up each time. Or sometimes it would go back down where, like, World 4 is probably 30 again. World 5 is probably 70. World 6 is probably 60, and then probably, let's just say, World 7 was 70, and World 8 was, like, 80, and then World 9 was, like, 50. <laughs> I don't know. But, like, yeah, that's how we used to play it. And so I made an apple season, and the only way you can get caught is if you land in the apple, because then you get poisoned, and you start all over. But I decided not to do that for this game. Um, in fact, what also made this game shorter is by cutting those worlds out. So I did eight worlds on here, and then this one I did world nine in the treasure world. Okay? It's not really the Mario game, but it's something similar to what I used to do. And the last time I made this Mario board game was before my YouTube channel, before I knew there was a season seven of Once Upon a Time. So let's go through these bad guys. On world one, and every time when you get to a new world, it's more challenging, okay? World one, the only bad guys you have to deal with is turtle and mushroom. If you get a turtle... You go back six spaces. So if you get a turtle, you go back six spaces. Like, look at this tur turtle. If you got it and you went back six spaces, one, two, three, four, five, you'd be all the way starting all over from Princess Peach's Castle. Usually when I make the Mario board game, it usually starts with Princess Peach's Castle because that's what World 1 starts with. But unfortunately, it says Ben and Madeline because when I first made this game, I played with Madeline. And all these mar slide marks... Like, for example, in my old Mario board game, these dots would used to mean fireball from World 8. That's a World 8 challenging bad guy. It's a fireball, and if you get a fireball, that means you... St you it used to mean you start all over, but it doesn't mean that anymore. We'll get to that in a minute. But, like, these used to be fireballs, but then I decided for this Mario board game, this is not a fireball. This is a dot. So, like, see this canyon here? This is World 6, right where my finger is. See this canyon? This canyon right here is just like the one from World 6. You know those bag black bad guy canyons where it that kill you? Yeah, anyway. Instead, in this Mario board game, they're supposed to help you. But they can also be an enemy, too. These canyons cannot only take you to, like, the end of the world or the, to the next world, but they can take you back a world. So, like, one of these canyons probably takes you to back to World 1. That's what that dot means. Now, for fireballs, I changed them to sticks. Now, look, you see a lot of sticks on here, but they're not sticks. Like, to get to that, let me take you these in order. So, turtle means you go back six spaces. Mushroom means you start the world all over. So, like, back when I was saying how I used to put the bad guys at the end of each world, at the end of world one, like I was saying, the, for this game, we're not adding the bad guys in. But back in my old Mario game, when we used to add the bad guys at the end of each world, at the end of world one, the bad guy would consider as world one until after you defeated it three times. If you got a mushroom, uh, you would start all the way from world one. So if you're, and world one is only like 10 spaces. World one only has like 10 scores. It's very short, right? And like world eight has like 20. It's the longest. But like when I first made this, world one had like at least 30 squares on it. So like, so like if you were if you went 30 squares all the way through world one without getting a single bad guy and you were just about to go to world two, but you got a 
Mushroom before going to World 2, you'd go all the way back and start World 1 all over again. Mushroom is not that bad, though, because, like, well, let's just say you're on World 8. If you get a Mushroom on World 8, you don't go back to World 1. You go back to the beginning of World 8. Same what applies to every world. You go back to just the beginning of the world. And then you have a B. That's when you out. When you get stung by a B, you're out. You're not playing. Well, the and here's the thing. If you get a B, you only have one chance into coming back into the game. And that's when you get a penguin. But now let me talk to you. When you first... Now, I don't know which version of Mario you're going to... I don't know which version of Mario that you're playing. And I know you're not playing these. These are my own made-up games and rules. But, like, if you were playing this game, okay, there's different versions. I made different versions. No matter which version you're playing, um, it would always go down to this. Every version was the same, like this. In World 1, no matter how long it was, no matter if it had 30 squares or not, World 1 always has the turtles and mushrooms. World 2 has the turtles and mushrooms, but with the B added. And World 3 has the penguin on it. So when you get into each world, a new bad guy is added into the game, you know? And the more bad guys, the harder it is to finish the game, right? Turtle, mushroom, then you have B who enters in world two world one world one has two bad guys because it just does it has turtle and mushroom world two is a b world three we add a penguin to it world four is a fish world five is a flower world six is a canyon we have two different types of canyons and i'll get to those in a minute world seven is a dog and then world eight is a fireball and then world nine is a star and then for the treasure world, you don't get a bad guy. For the apple world, you don't get a bad guy. And for the free world, well, there's no bad guys on it. But for the, the nine main worlds of Mario, you know, you get a bad guy each time. When I first made this game, there was no bad guys on World 9. And then, like, the third time I made this, I decided to add a star. Because when you when you have a star, you know how you, you're, like, invisible and no bad guy can get you? That was the thing. So, let's talk about it. So, Turtle, you go back six spaces. Mushroom, you start... Depending on which world you're on, you start that world all the way from the beginning. A bee means you're out. Okay? A penguin can be two things. One, if you have a player that's out, I say on here, just like the Mario Wii game, you can only go up to four players. You can either play as Mario, Luigi, Yellow Toad, or Blue Toad. Okay? If you have, like, four players and, and one of them gets a bee, then once you get a penguin, you can bring that person back. Now they don't have to... Now here's another thing. If you're on, like, World 8 and you're almost done with the game and you get a penguin, that's good. Because, like, if someone got a B on World 2 and they were falling behind, well, let's just say you're on World 8 and you get a penguin. You bring them back, but not only you bring them back, you bring them to World 8 with you, you know? It's just that the next time you get a the next time it's your turn, you don't bring them anymore. But you bring them with you to World 8 and you have them stand on the same square as you. So, like, if you're, like, right here and you get, world like, a penguin, there is no penguin here, but just saying, that, oh, here's a penguin right there. Like, right here. See how there's a penguin right there? If you if you get that penguin, not, see that P? If you get that penguin and someone's already out, the B won't make them start all over or, or it won't make them start the world all over. If you get a penguin, it lands right there. So, like, if I'm Mario... And Luigi has a bee. I get a penguin, and I bring M Mario back, and he come and he comes with me. And then when it's my turn, I'll go ahead and when he, he get it. And then you have a fish. A fish means three strikes. Strike one, and you go back eight spaces, not six like turtle. You go back eight spaces. Strike two is the same as mushroom. You start the world from the beginning, and strike three means you start all the way over. But I also changed the rules a little bit. So for this board game, the one where all the worlds are in one piece of paper, um, it says on here, strike one, go back eight spaces, strike two, beginning of the world, strike three, start all over. Okay, it's the same rules. Now a flower means just like Candyland, you skip a turn. Turn. You skip a turn. And then a canyon, we have two canyons on here. We have the kind of canyons that are bad guys, right? So, like, see these dots? The dots, with, not this dot. This has a bridge on it. 
but like if you see a dot without a bridge on it, like this dot, like this dot right here, this is a canyon. This is a canyon right here, right there. Um, if you get a canyon or if you land on the dot, you know, I, I usually keep track on which dot goes to which canyon. So I just keep track. If you get a dot, that will take you to the canyon it goes to, you know. But let's just say this. Let's just say you get a canyon on World 9, and it takes you back to World 7. Well, you start, you get to go back a little bit. Now, canyons are not always bad, so let's just say you're on World 7, and it takes you to World 9. Whoa, you're way closer to ending the game, right? Yes. And then, yeah, so that's what canyons do. But then you have this other canyon. It's the World Canyon. And it doesn't just take you to different spots. Because be before we do the world canyons, the, the bad guy canyons, the canyons that I was just talking to you about, doesn't usually take you to the next world or the world after. It usually takes you like from the beginning of world six to the end. It's just that some of them are taking you to the next world because there's not enough spaces or I don't know why. But like... Then you have these world canyons. So, like, on World 1, sometimes on most of the board games that I make, you either are going to see a world canyon that shoots you to World 2 or 3. These canyons cannot shoot... These cans cannot make you skip more than two worlds. So, if you're on World 1, it's you're not going to find a World 4 canyon. It's either going to be World 2 or 3. And then when you're on World 2, it's going to be 3 and 4. But now, with the Mario Wii, you know how there's world canyons... So if you get the secret passage, the the canyon can shoot you to world five or, you know what I mean? Well, I added this to the board game. Not only the, that the world canyons can shoot you forward, it can shoot you backward. And also on world eight, I added world nine canyons too. So if you're like on world seven and you get a world nine canyon, that's fine. If you're on world eight and you get a world nine canyon, that's fine. But you won't find one on world six or below, but you know what I mean. Now... Let's just say you get a World 1 Canyon. You're going to see a World 1 Canyon on almost every single world except for World 1. So if you're on like World 7 and you land on a World 1 Canyon, you get to start all over. If you land on a World 2 Canyon, you get to start all the way back to World 2. So when you think of these World can Canyons, not only that they can take you straight to the end of the game, they can take you back to the beginning. So throughout most of these, they... Well, most... Throughout most of these, they're all bad. Most of these bad guys on these lists are bad. They could help you. Half of them could help you in a good way, but also in a negative way. And some of them could actually help you in a pause. Well, yeah. And actually, yeah, some of them on here can uh, Like, I don't know. Just pretend I didn't even say that. Um, but anyway, yeah. So you have a can so you so you have a world canyon. And on world nine, usually on world nine I put one canyon that goes to the treasure world, but there's no canyons that go to the free world or no canyons that go through the apple world. So that would be hard. And usually when I play the end of the game, after the apple world, like like I said on here, be not not lines, but like when I first made this game, I actually put portals, you know, portals. And so after the Apple World, if you go through the portal, it take it usually takes you back to World 1. So it's like a big circle of 12 worlds, you know? And you just go all the way to World 8 to say Princess Peach, and then you come back to World 1, you know? And whoever gets back to World 1 first wins. Well, actually, when I first made this game, I didn't even add the treasure world or anything like that. There was only nine worlds. And the rule was that if you want to win, you have to save Princess Peach and finish the game. There were some World 9 cans on World 8, and some of the times I played this game, I get to World 8, but I don't save Princess Peach because I get caught into a canyon that shoots me to World 9. So I finish the game, but I don't fully win. I win halfway, but I don't win fully because I didn't save Princess Peach. And whoever saves Princess Peach gets the other half, you know. If you want to fully win, you have to do both. For this game, you don't. Because it doesn't even have Princess Peach kidnapped. So... This is the first game where I actually don't have any bad guy. Well, I have bad guys, but I don't have anything like King Bowser or Princess Peach. However, 
it's still kind of like the Mario game. And it's not, and as you see on here, like, see these marks right here that say Ben or, Mc, or Madel or, like, Madeline? Usually, when I play, when I played this game in the past, I either used Serial to mark where I'm at, or I do what I just did. I, I leave, I, I leave a mark on the side, but I don't put Ben or Michaela. Usually I put Mario or Luigi. So, so like, if you're good at keeping track of which player you are, you can just put the initial of that character on the side. But since this was, since this wasn't a full Mario game, um, I didn't do that. But yeah, you have only one cannon that shoots you to the treasure world and nothing else. Okay? But you, you finish the game all the way through and etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. And then the next thing on this bag I list, that's the World 6 bag. I, world 7 is a dog. And that's when you switch places with someone. So. So, like, if I'm on World... If Luigi's on World 8 and Mario's on World 1... And Luigi gets a bad guy, or let's just say Luigi's on World 7 and gets a dog. That means he goes back to where Mario is on World 1, and Mario goes to the spot where Luigi was on World 7. So, like, let's just say you're this close to the end of the game. You're reaching the finish line. You're almost back to Princess Peach's castle. And up on here, it doesn't take you back to World 1. After World 9, you just go to the treasure. And on one of my Mario games, I actually did that. Before I added the Apple World or the Free World, you would go to the treasure world, and get the treasure and just end there. That's it. Get the treasure and just end there. See? Treasure. All done. You know? So for this one, you don't actually go in a circle. But like, let's just say Mario's on World 1 and Luigi's on World like 7. So if Luigi gets a dog, if he was so if he was almost on World A and he was almost about to win, or like even if he's on World A. If he's only a few squares away from saving Princess Peach, or actually, there, there. Back when I first made this, um, there was a Bowser fight. But if he already defeated King Bowser and he's just about to save Princess Peach, and he gets a dog, that means, that means when he was just about, that means even if Luigi's almost winning, he's gonna switch places with Mario, and he's gonna end up being the one who's losing, and Mario's gonna be the one who ends up winning. So if you're the Mario player, you you should be happy about this, you know. So, like I said, bad guys are good and bad. In this situation, the dog that you see on World 7, you know, is good to Mario. He's helping Mario win. So whoever plays the character Mario is happy. But if you're Luigi, it's kind of disappointing. And yet it was your fault that you landed on the dog anyway. Dog And World 9 is usually the hardest. So, like, you know how, like, on Candyland, like, when there's... You know the colorful spots that don't have candy on it. So, like for example, look at this. See how this spot? Is, no, not that one. See how this? See how this spot is uh, clean? The one before the P. The one before the P. See how it's clean? See how there's no bad guy on it? So you're safe just landing on it. Well, guess what? Well, I even forgot what I was saying. On World Nine. There's not a lot of these blank spots. You might end up landing on a bad guy, and it could help you in a good way or a bad way. That's why World 9 is the hardest, because you only have, like, three blank spots. Even if there's, like, 70 squares, you only have, like, three blank spots. You know? That's why, like, um, that's why we never really finished the game. Because we spend, like, four hours just trying to pass World 9 and finish the game. We just go, let's just skip it, right? And so I start making this new canyon on World 8 that shoots you to the treasure world, and it, that's not that just makes your life worse. And it's usually the shortest world, even shorter than World 1. In fact, if you look at this treasure world, see how it's just like a loop, like defeating a bad guy kind of thing? See how it's a loop? See, that's how short I made it in my original board game, so. Still hard. Oh, well. Uh, and just like this World 9 here, you could hardly see a blank spot, right? So it's very hard to pass. So, like, if 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 you're on World 9, and and if you're Luigi and you're on World 9 and you're, and you're almost done with it, what, you might not be the one getting a bad guy. What if Mario gets a bad, what if Mario's on World 7 and he gets a dog? Then it's not Luigi's fault for landing on the dog, it's Mario. It's your enemy player fault, you know? Because not not only 
your enemy wants to win the game more than you, but he wants to get revenge on you and try to make you lose. Kind of like cheating, but it's not cheating. And so it's very hard. And then the next thing you have on the list is that on World 8, you get a fireball. Now, it was a fireball, but I changed it into a stick because I don't want you to confuse a stick with a dot. That is actually where a canyon is shot. In my first original board game, I actually made this a canyon and drew a line showing where it connected. But then I just turned them into dots because I didn't know I was going to turn this into a Mario game at first. So then I was like, okay, for fireballs, we'll just put sticks because, you know, they're like torches, right? Torches on a stick. Get it? So, yeah, I put sticks. But don't get confused because some of these sticks are not really sticks. I just labeled where I was at in the game, you know? So look for the stick that's not that doesn't have a label on it and that will be bad. And a fireball, what it used to mean is that you start the whole game all over, you know. But I, when I, when I, I haven't made the Mario board game in a long time. And so when I made this, just like a few days ago, it was very confusing. Like, yeah. Like, I didn't even know what was going on. So, yeah, it was very confusing, and I kind of forgot what it actually meant, so I changed it, because, I, cause like, in, in the fish game, you already have the strike three, where you start all over, and I know strike one is kind of already used on the turtle, where you go back six spaces, the only thing different is that it says eight, and then three means you go back, two means you go back to the beginning of the world, which is like, which is like, um, which is like mushroom, right? Which is like the mushroom, right? But then you get a strike three where you start all over. And um, for some reason in my head, I thought I was already using that twice. I was only using it once, so I should have kept the fireball. But in this game, this is the only game where I actually changed it. I changed the fireball, and I thought of something very clever. So you know when you get, I just told you about the bee, right? If you get a bee, you're out, and the only way to come back is a penguin. I thought about this really hard, and I was like, a fireball shouldn't make you start all over, you know? I mean, like, that's horrible. That's part of the reason why when I play this Mario board game, it makes me, this board game takes me, like, four hours, because part of the reason is that I get to World 8, and I get a fireball, and I start all over from World 1. Well, I don't want to make, I don't want to make the game too long. So I changed the fireball into where if you get the fireball, you are out of the game. Not like the bee. It's not the same thing. When you get a bee, you're out of the game, and if you get a penguin, you come back. A fireball is where you're out permanently. It's kind of like on Once Upon a Time. If you die, you go to the underworld, right? Well, what if you are? What if you? What if you don't exist, like Robin Hood? What if you're using the Olympian crystal from season five, and you get stabbed with it, and you don't exist? You know what I mean? You just poof. You're gone, right? You don't even exist. So that's what the fireball is. It's kind of like that limping and crystal. Where if you get stung by a bee, you go to the underworld. Okay? And the only person that's going to bring you back alive is a penguin. If you get a fireball, you go to non-existence. You're gone. So once all the, player gets a, once all the players get a fireball, game's over. No one wins. Back when I played the old game where the fireball would just make you start all over, the only time no one would win is if, let's just say Mario gets a B, Luigi gets a B, Penguin and Blue Toad gets a B, and Yellow Toad gets a B. Now, see, here's the hard part, is that rarely that never happens, because, like, if you have Mario and Luigi getting a B, then most likely a Yellow Toad or a Blue Toad is going to get a P before they all disappear, right? But there was that one point where I was playing this game, where I didn't put enough penguins in the game. And I didn't even realize that. I didn't make it barely even. So eventually we all got bees. It took a long time because there was still a lot of penguins in there. But after like four hours of playing. Uh, we eventually all got bees. And throughout most of our plays playing this game. We all got out. But it still took four hours. When me and Malin was playing this game. Um, since it's shorter and it's combining all the worlds into one paper. We finished this game in a matter of 30 minutes, or I told you, like, an hour. So, yeah. 
Anyway, that's Fireball. And then the last thing you have on here is that World 9 has the last bad guy. And since I hate odd numbers, I put two bad guys on World 1. And that's Turtle and Mushroom, just to make 10. So our 10th and final bad guy is a star. And it's just like the Mario Wii, where if you get a star, you're invisible. Now back at my old game, um, if you get a star, you're invisible. But only for one turn, and then you lose it. I thought that was a little too hard because on World 9, like I said, it doesn't have a lot of blank spots and you're barely not going to succeed through it, you know? I thought I would make this game easier and make your lives easier by changing it to this. If you get a star, you get to keep it for the next four turns. And no matter which bad guy you land on, no matter which bad guy you land on out of this list, okay? No matter which bad guy you land on, it can't affect, it can't affect you with the star. Once you use all your four turns, you lose the star unless you get another one. Then it will reduce to eight. I mean, it will not reduce. It will gain more. You'll get eight. If you already used two turns and you didn't get a star, but you get four more because you get another star, that's six. Get it? You just add four to how many star turns you have left. If you have one star turn left, but you land on another star, you get four. Now, if you have one star turn left and you're lucky enough to land on a blank spot, you get zero. But once you get another star, that's good. And the one, and then see, just to make, and in the other game, the one reason why we didn't even finish this game is because I didn't put a lot of stars. And so I decided that um, on these first three squares, I'd put a star. See how it says star, 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 star? And then there's a penguin. Okay, star, 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 right? I put three stars at the beginning. So if you roll the dice, you should be using two dice in this game. If you roll the dice and get like a two, you can at least get one of the stars and survive through some of it. Because like, let's just say you land on a B. Where's a B? Let's just say you land on a B. You're not out because you have a star. It can't affect, it can't affect you. So what I did is that I put three stars at the beginning. So it would be easier for you to pass world nine. Because you get a star, you get four turns, and you pass, right? Now, don't forget, this one doesn't have it. Oh, wait, it does. See how it has the World 1 Canyon? It does have it. But most worlds are going to have World 1 Canyons on it in other versions of the game. And so that's going to make it harder. If you get a canyon, it won't affect you. But just know if you don't get a star, it's, World 9 is going to be hard for you. When me and Malin played this game, the sad news is that we all got out. I made this game easier. I, I made this game easier so we can finish it. But unfortunately, the thing is, is that back when I first made this game, I, I told you about the fireball, right? It makes you start all the way over. If I kept that roll, the game would have been longer, and me and Malin would have got the treasure when we played this game. We played this game once before. I, I made this board game, and we played it. And we decided we wanted to put it on YouTube. But look, this video has been 40 minutes. Yikes! It's been 40 minutes, and it took us 30 minutes to get through the Once Upon a Time card game. So I, having this on top of it would have been an hour and 10 minutes, so I'm kind of glad I didn't do it with Malin last week. Because this is a long game to explain, guys. But anyway, it goes in a circle. And also on World 3, remember how I told you about the loop-de-loop? -loop? When I first made the game, I did that a lot on each world, you know? Not World 1 and 2, but Worlds 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. But for this game, I only did it on World 3 because I wanted to make this really short. And on World 7, sometimes I do mountains, but... Anyway, um, yeah. World 9, yeah, you get it. Now, World 9 can also shoot you back to World A and you can get a fireball. But me and Malin, yeah, so be careful. But no, now, on the Mario Wii, getting a World Canyon is a good thing, but here it's not, and I already explained why. But, anyway, me and Malin played this game, and we did get to World 9, but like I said, we didn't land on a B. And like I was saying earlier, what if all the players got a B? Well, is there anyone to get a penguin to bring them back? No. So once Mario, Luigi, Yellow Toad, and Blue Toad get a B, then there's no one to, to get a penguin, so the game's over. I told you about that, right? I didn't get a B. We got a fireball. Now, normally, that would make our game longer, right? And we'd start all over and just finish the game, because I made this game a lot easier for us. In fact, we even got a couple stars, and we were almost close to the treasure. 
But then we ended up getting a bad guy that shot us back to, like, World 8 or something. And then we went back to World 9. And every time when we, 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 every time when we would get to World 9... We would end up getting like a mushroom or a canyon that would shoot us all. Well, not this canyon. This one takes you to the treasure world. Like, look, if you look at this dock canyon, look, it takes you to, oh, sorry. If you look at this dock canyon, like, see this dot? It, see, follow the line. It takes you to this. And you're almost at the end of the treasure world and you're almost winning. If you were playing the original game, you'd still have an apple world and a free world to get to, but it's not that bad. It, it should be easy. But, like, except for the apple world because it is poison. But, like, for this one, I didn't add that in there. So, it does help you win. Like I said, the bad guys can sometimes be a bad thing. And every time when me and Malin got to World 9, we ended up going back to World 8 a lot of times. And then eventually we got to the point where we got the stick, this fireball, and we died. This is where we ended, guys. We kept getting this guy. And this is why we couldn't finish the game the first time we played this. And so, unfortunately, I should have not changed the rule. If I kept it the same, we would have went back to World 1 and still finished the game a different And still would have got back to World 9 the long way and finished the game. Because it's a lot easier. It's very rarely... For this game, it's very rarely you're going to get all the players out. But for the other game, it's very easy. And so I tried to make this easier by not doing so much, you know. And I'm still doing so much, but we would have finished the game if I didn't change the little rules of the fireball. Because if you get a fireball, you're out forever. Now, the thing about a penguin is that... I forgot to say this. The thing about a penguin is that once you get a bee, someone's out, right? And a penguin brings them back. Well, what if you land on a penguin and no one has a bee? All the players. Mario, Luigi, uh, Yellow Toad, and Blue Toad don't have any bees. No one's out. Everyone's still in the game. If you get a penguin, it should make you start all over as well. So given the fact that a mushroom makes you start all over, a penguin makes you start all over, I didn't want to do that with the fish. I mean, I did. But with all these starting all overs, I didn't want to do that with the fireball because that was too much starting all overs. And so I'm kind of glad that I changed the fireball to you're out forever, no coming back, right? Because... If you if it was another bad guy that made you start all over, it would make the game boring. Because the thing about adding all these bad guys in the in the Mario board game, the thing about adding all these bad guys guys. Uh when I first made these bad guys, I wanted them to have different like things. So, like, you know how a mushroom makes you start from world one to the... If you're at the end of a world and you get a mushroom, it starts you, It makes you start from the beginning of, beginning of the world all over again. And with a turtle, you only go back six spaces. I wanted each bad guy to have its own different thing, you know? And so I hate having multiple bad guys having the same thing. So you have a fish. It's not completely the same where you start all over because you have to get strike one and strike two. That's what's different. It's like a football game. I mean, not football game. It's like a baseball game, so that doesn't count. But given the fact that penguin, if you get a penguin, you can bring someone back. But if no one's out of the game, then it will make you start all over. So given the fact that I'm already, I already used that, I can't. I just realized I can't believe I'm using it in the fireball. So from here on out, if you play these Mario board games, if you play the old ones, that's different. But if you play these ones. It's going to be more like if you get a fireball, you're out forever. Because I hate making the bad guys the same. I I hate I hate I hate making the bad guys the having the same consequences for getting it, you know. And so I just don't want to do that. But anyway, that's the Mario game. And before we end this video, there are two more things on here that I have to say. A bridge is like another thing, and it has dots on it, but. Just so you don't can get confused between a cannon dot and dot. If you see these bridges. Like sometimes like on my old Mario board games. You'll see this loop de loop. Uh, sometimes you'll get a bridge where you skip this whole loop de loop. And not have to deal with it. Or like sometimes you get a bridge. And it takes you from here. Across from here. Like see this bridge. S see this bridge.
see this bridge? It takes you from here to here. And then you have this bridge that takes you from here to up there. Get it? And sometimes you have, like, these long bridges like this one where it gets you from here to here and here to here. So if you land on this dot, you won't just land right here, but you'll go up a lot. So, like, there's this one board game where there was a bridge that took you all the way to World A. It went from World 1 to World 2, World 2 to World 3, World 3 to World 4. It was a long bridge. And so sometimes bridges can be intense and very helpful. But there, then you have these other bridges where they only go up, up one and they take you from the beginning of the world to the end, just like the canyons. But it's not the same because not only it can do that, but it could take you from World 1 to World 6 without even stopping at each world, like I just told you. And then sometimes you have bridges where if you're at the end of World 1 and you get a bridge, sometimes it takes you in the middle of the... Sometimes the bridge is cut in half and it's not finished and it takes you in the middle, which means it takes you to the next world and it lands on the next world. Or sometimes you have like a World 1 bridge that takes you to World 9 straightly. And there's no canyon on World 1 that actually makes you go to World 9, so... It's always easy. And then there was this one game where I actually put a World 9 one on, World Nine Canyon on. Because if you're on World 1, I wanted to make it fairly for you to get to World 9 and cheat a little. So I gave you a canyon and it shot you to World 9. And then you get a World 1 Canyon and you get shot back. But And then I had these one canyons called World Zero. It's not on this game. When I'm introducing you to this Mario game, World Zero is different. World Zero is where... Um, is where you get shooted to World Zero. So basically, this treasure world I just told you about, I call it World Zero, because it's not really a world. And then you have a free world, and then you have an apple world, but this treasure world is technically what World Zero means. And so sometimes you'll go straight to the treasure world. Or, like, in one game, I think one of the World Zeros was to get to King Bowser, and that's not really a world. The part where you hit a bad guy three times is the end of a world, like World 1 or World 8. So if you get, like, a World 0, it probably takes you to the end of World 8 where you defeat King Bowser and etc. And usually when that happens, I only put a turtle and mushroom to make it less tense, you know, and less overwhelming. But for this, in this game, I didn't do it. But for the previous game that I made, like, a long, long time ago, I added more bad guys, and it was bad. But, yeah, those are bridges, guys. <laughs> And sometimes you even have a short bridge where you have, like, let's just say this is a bridge. Let's just say this square is a bridge and you only go over one. Skip one. If it's a really big bad guy, like a fireball or a bee, then just be thankful that the bridge saved your life, right? <laughs> or sometimes you have a bridge that doesn't go to the end of the world, but somewhere in the middle. And sometimes you have short bridges like that, but no matter if they're short or long, the bridge is always a good thing. Unless you're on World 9 and you get a bridge that that brings you back to World 1. Like, you remember in Candyland, those bridges? <laughs> if you get a... I added the Candyland rules to these rules. To the Mario rules. And so there is no treats. But, like, if you get... If you get a bridge on Candyland, you go across the bridge, right? Sometimes a bridge can be a bad thing. Because, like, if you're at the end of Candyland and you go and you get on a bridge and it takes you a little bit backwards, that's bad, right? I mean, there's not a lot of bad guys, but for Mario, it's easy for you to get to lose the game, right? When a bridge takes you back. So a bridge can be a bad guy. Now, a bridge is not technically a bad guy. I'm not considering it as a bad guy. It's just a bridge. It's just a piece of wood, basically. But, like, it could sometimes be a bad thing. Same with the ca world canyons that I told you about. They could be bad things, too. Because not only that, they could shoot you to the next world or so. They could shoot you back a few worlds. So, that's why it's bad. Ugh. Sorry, this was a long detour of Mario. But, yeah. And normally, when I make this board game, the board game takes up nine pieces of paper. Or sometimes even, like, four. You know? But I was able to put every single world on one paper. It just couldn't fit World 9, so I put it on a separate paper. But as you can see, there's not a lot of chaos. I mean, there is, but you don't see a lot of chaos on which way you go and etc. On here, it gets a little more complicated. But, like, it's Mario, guys. So just subscribe. I'll be alive. See you next weekend. Also, this video is so long. I'm not going to be cutting any parts out. So, like, when, when I make my videos, sometimes you see the skip over where I'm like, where like, let's just say I say this. The bells of Notre Dame. Oh, I just coughed. Um, ah.
Well, and then you watch the finished product, and I say, the bells of Notre Dame, and you see a cutoff, and I say, the bells of Notre Dame, ha, because when you watch my videos, those few cutoffs that you can tell in my videos are things that I put on my videos that not a lot of you viewers will like, so that's why I do that. And, but since this video has been the longest video I have ever made, and since I made it so long, I'm not going to cut anything out because it's too long. Like, I make a lot of 30 minute videos and I do cut stuff out, but the thing with these videos is that I say, I end up saying too much things that won't interact with the audience. And so I try cutting them out. And then, but once I get to a certain point of cutting some parts out of my video, the video editor is like saying there's too much cuts and, and then I have to redo the whole thing and I don't like it. So like with the once upon time cards, um, that video that I made last week, there were probably some things that you kind of wish I didn't put in the video, right? Well, I tried cutting them out, okay? And then there was too much cuts. And so, fortunately, they made me delete the whole cutting out video, and I was forced to keep their original video. And so that whole 36-minute that video of me playing with the Mario cards was supposed to be a 12-minute video, and it, was and it had to stay at 36 because I was cutting too much. There is a certain number of cuts that you can do when you make a YouTube video. And once you make a YouTube video and you want to polish it and cut things that weren't necessarily, you can't do more than like 30 cuts. And since the video is like 30 minutes, it's hard not to do 30 cuts, you know? Because you like cut a piece each minute you watch, you know? And so, and since this is, and since this is like almost an hour, I... I know I'm not going to be able to cut everything that I messed up on. So if you watch this episode and you and you see any mess ups during the video, like maybe the time when I lost got lost in thought and couldn't think of what I was going to say, ignore that and just continue watching the rest of my video. Like don't ignore it and X out the video once you think it's boring. But like I, this is so long that I know by the time I cut half of this out, it's not going to let me save my progress. And so I'm not going to waste the time going through and cutting these, these parts out. But I just wanted to introduce you to the game. And it's a good thing I didn't actually play with Malin because I wouldn't want to anyway. Because I'd still ex be explaining these rules and it would still be very long. Anyway, I'm sorry, guys. But ho I hopefully this video was still entertaining. The reason why it probably isn't that much, much entertaining is because, well, it's a long video, right? But it was also, it was also a lot, ex it also took a long time to explain the f full game. I mean, I wanted to make sure you understood it. So if I ever, if I ever repeated anything or I just paused in the middle of the video, the loop, losing my thought and trying to come back to it then ignore that don't like x out of the video but like and i know i already said that but just ignore it and well and just keep watching the video and sometimes if the video is too long or there's a certain part you don't really want to listen to then just skip over like 30 seconds and just keep watching okay this video is going to be exactly an hour long, so, I mean, yeah, I try to do that with a live stream, and the past live streams I did in the past were actually an hour, I just cut big pieces out of the live stream, like, just big pieces, like, those cahoots that I made last month didn't go very well, and, I'm, and I narrowed the live stream down to 12 to 17 minutes, so actually, mo my live streams haven't been an hour long, but they were supposed to be. But still, given the fact that the live streams weren't this long, this still is considered the longest video ever. Even if I make a live stream that's over an hour long, live streams won't count on my channel. I'm still going to say this is the longest video ever unless I make one over an hour, which will never happen. But unless I do an episode review, well, no, that will be almost an hour, but it won't be all the way cut. Never mind. Um, yeah. Or maybe let's just say this now or or let yeah, let's just say this. Maybe maybe I'm watching a movie that's 
that doesn't have copyrights. And we watch it on YouTube and it's like two hours long. <laughs> but so far, okay. The point is, this is the longest video I made. And that's all I'm going to go with today. It's been a busy weekend. If you want to know why I have makeup on, I've been doing a show. So come see Hunchback. Anyway, see you in the next video on The Greatest Actor of 2020. If you if if you think the rest of the sport video is kind of boring, uh, this is the point where you can actually X out because the rest of the video is not revel relevant and I'm not going to cut it out because it will take forever. I'm just going to keep this whole hour thing on here and just leave it be. So, all right, guys. <laughs> Bye. Um, just continue watching this video all the way to the end. If you watch it all the way to the end, let me know. I haven't been getting any comments lately, so please leave me comments on the greatest actor of 2020.